evening. I'm Mike Adley. Welcome to Newsmakers, the panel where we debate the week's issues through Canterbury eyes. It's a pleasure to introduce our guests from Lane Neve Law, partner Duncan Webb, uh, from the University of Canterbury Law teacher David Round, and the Mayor of Hiranui, Gary Jackson. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Michael. Thank you, Mike. Good to be here. We are going to begin with the Law, Commission, uh, Law Commission's thumping great tomb on reforming our liquor laws. 153 recommendations have been laid out. Sir Geoffrey has been a busy boy. Uh, we will rip through some of the key proposals. First of all, the age of purchase back up to 20 for on and off licences. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, we made a mistake. Uh, there was a lot of lobbying uh, from the kind of sectors you'd expect, and they successfully lobbied to bring down the age. And what do you think happened? They sold a lot more liquor. Uh, no surprises there. As indeed I had predicted, since I wasn't in favour of lowering the age. But I must say, I also like the hospitality chap, uh, association chap's idea of a, a drinking age as well yeah. as a purchase age. You think that's got merit? Mm. Okay, we may come back to that, David. Very good. Um, back up to 20, across the board? Not across the board, Michael. And again, I think I'd follow what David just said. I agree with 20 in terms of purchase, but mm. I can't see any reason why 18-year-olds can't drink in, in licensed premises um, in, in that supervised environment, if you like. Mm. I, I would have thought supervision would be the key okay. here, Duncan. Yeah. Why are you in favour oh, no, of... You're probably, yeah, no, 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 you're probably right on that, but I think in terms of the original, uh, just lowering that age, carte blanche down to 18, it was... It was, it was a radical experiment that went a bit wrong. For those who are sort of 17 and a half, 18 now, the prospect is that uh, in the next year or two, if Parliament follows Sir Geoffrey's lead, um, they are going to be able to do a little bit of legalised drinking at the local bar, then uh, sort of out dry for a while. It's all rather bizarre, isn't it, David? Well, transition, periods of transition are always awkward. Are we going to change? I'm not going to change then. <laughs> we'll just We've go. got to do something. We're an alcoholic nation. Do you think we have a crisis with alcohol? Oh, look, I think uh, there are real and deep and significant problems. And I think the good thing about this report is it actually recognises that and it draws some interesting parallels with the smoking problem. That's widely recognised as a serious health problem and that's how it's attacked. Whereas alcohol problems aren't seen as health problems, they're seen as social problems, but they're not. They're about, although they're about behaviour, they're about you know, addictive traits and, and real health related issues. If alcohol were a drug which just appeared on the scene now, we didn't know before, and it were classified according to the amount of harm that it did, it would be up there along with heroin or cocaine or pee. Marijuana? No, no, marijuana is far less harmful. Uh, it's completely irrational that we have, uh, we have alcohol being utterly legal and marijuana being completely illegal. All right. Um, in terms of the price of Alcohol. It's interesting that uh, the Justice Minister didn't waste much time before he demolished um, the uh, suggestion of hiking the excise tax uh, on booze by 50%. Was that politically gutless of Simon Power to essentially scrap it? I was amazed at the speed with which they jumped into mm. that position. Personally, I would still seriously consider increasing the excise tax, and in the same way as the road user charges and so on are ploughed back into roads, I would plough all of the excise tax back into the other supporting measures that need to go into the whole alcohol issue, whether that be education, whether it be detox centres, or whatever else needs to be done. Is alcohol too cheap for our own good? Yes, it is. Evidently, it's cheaper than bottled water. Not that I buy that. <laughs> or well, some some alcohol is cheaper than some bottled water. Yeah, but, but I'm, the I'm, RTDs I'm, for a dollar, two dollars at the local supermarket. Mm. You know, for your seventeen-year-old girlie. Yes. Um, Eighteen. Well, 18 if they're legal, <laughs> yeah. 17 if you're supplying them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, the, it's just utter, utter pragmatism from this government, and populism as well. You know, the idea that we won't touch anything for the Rugby World Cup, that the Rugby World Cup is more <laughs> important than our nation's health. Mm. And basically it's a bottom line, there's money to be made in it, we don't want to rock the boat. It is a little bit of cowardice there, I'd have to say. How on earth can the law and the enforcers of the law ever get to grips with the great swathe of supplying of minors, irrespective of where we set the age of purchase and so forth. You know, if you're a parent, David, and you've got a 13-year-old um, a son who's off to a party that night, he really wants that bottle of bourbon off you, you give it to him. How on earth can the law yeah. ever deal to issues like that? Well, that's why the law can't. Do, I, if I were a parent, which I'm not, sadly, but, but I, I don't think I would be giving a 13-year-old child uh, a bottle of bourbon. But some do. Well, they should well, be. It's bad. They, they should be... Slept on the wrist. 
But mm. it's a health, you know, that's what mm. I mean. It's a health problem and a social problem, not a legal problem. I mean, they're, they're, you need to use those other tools to address it. You know, and if, so, if a parent's giving a child a bottle of bourbon, that is a huge risk to the child, and that parent should be there should be intervention. Mm. So now that's not about the law necessarily, it's about the social agencies involved getting in there and saying that's not proper parenting, that child's at risk. Okay, what about if I'm a stranger, I'm being badgered outside a bottle store by a group of teenagers saying hey look I'll give you 20 bucks if you go and get me a couple of does of whatever beer. Um, the chances that I am going to be collared by a cop are extremely remote, are they not? How on earth does the law deal with this? Can it? I don't know that the law can. I think it's an issue of social responsibility and attitude. I mean, uh, uh, the law can't do everything. Mm. And, I, and my, part of my worry in this is I think we're trying to get the law to solve the whole problem, and I don't think we can. How can we encourage responsibility? By being responsible ourselves. <laughs> well, it's a sense of it, yeah. I mean, there's a sense of community there, though, isn't there? Because I mean, people complain, you know, all the time about uh, their behaviours that they're seeing that are alcohol induced. Mm. Uh, yet, if someone is, you know, assisting in buying that and insisting in that irresponsible dr drinking, can't lie in their mouth to start then saying you know, this is all wrong. So it's about acting as a community, I think. Um, the likes of the Tui billboards, which seem to have become part and parcel of contemporary New Zealand culture, they would appear to have a bit of a, a bit of a question mark over their, their future lifespan now, you know, if we head down the road of restricting advertising, marketing and sponsorship and so forth. Would that be a sad day if yes, the two would. billboards were We'd, to go? We would be the poorer for it, Mike. Really? It, the, the, I think they're almost an art form. I mean, mm. I don't think anyone goes out and drinks more Tui beer because they've seen a Tui billboard. Mm. I could actually build a case that responsible signage and, and, and sponsorship, and I know Sir Jeffrey's attacked that as well, yeah. is actually in, in potentially maybe a, a help, not a hindrance. Most of the motor racing sponsorship I see today around alcohol yeah. actually preaches a don't drink and drive or drink responsible, you know, drink with responsibility message right direct to that target market. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, it's probably doing more harm and uh, more good than harm. Although I'm not au fait with, uh, with alcohol advertising, I'd imagine there'd be a lot worse pieces of advertising than the two billboards. Yeah. Advertising involving girls with no clothes on or very few and fun, fun, fun. And, uh, Tui does that as well. Do they? Oh, do they? Yes. Oh, 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 the look, I, I find it extraordinary that you can suggest <laughs> that, that no one drinks more beer, Tui beer, because they see Tui billboards. If that was the case, they wouldn't be there. Tui does not put those billboards up to amuse us. It's not it a community it up, service? It puts, it's not a community <laughs> service. It puts it up there to sell more beer. And it's well recognised that brand recognition is everything. And every 18 year old who's going to the pub for the first time ask for a Tui beer because it's their target market because they're tongue in cheek and disrespectful in their advertising and because they have scantily clad women on the tally at the Mangatanoka yes. Brewery Act. But they're going to drink a beer anyway Duncan, okay, <coughs> brand awareness is one thing, it's not telling them to drink more beer. No, right? they, I mean that's the thing with cigarettes, they, they, they stopped cigarette advertising and it had a massive uh, change in behaviour and it's only now coming through because from age zero you didn't see you don't see Rockmans and Paul Mall and Benson and Hedges everywhere. Mm. You don't have the awareness. You're not thinking that it's cool to smoke. It's All right. an entire change right. of behaviour. We are going to have to agree to disagree on this matter. Uh, coming up, we are going to look at matters to do with the foreshore, the seabed, Indigenous rights. And if that's not enough, we'll also have a look at ECAN. <laughs> do stay with us. <laughs>